Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. Merci. Merci. The court is now in session. This ouverte. morning, the chamber will continue matin, to hear the testimony of Mr. Richard Dadman via a video link from the United States of America. And for the afternoon session, commencing from 1 p.m., the uh, chamber will hear La the uh, statements of impact by two civil parties. Par who claims to suffer harms during the democratic Cambodia period. And the graphier, Ms. Tia Huang, could you report the attendance Madame of the parties Lager, and individuals to today's proceedings? Tia Siu Huang. Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present. As for Nun Chi, he is present in the holding cell downstairs as he requests to waive his rights to be present in the courtroom. His waiver has been delivered to the graffiti. The witness who is to testify, to testify today, uh, that is Mr. Richard Dudman, by a video link from the United States, and the AB unit confirms that the link has been connected for the proceedings and the witness himself is ready to testify. The civil parties who are to testify this afternoon there are two of them Two TCCP 982 and two TCCP 985. President, thank you, Mr. Jesu Huang. And the chamber now decides on a request by Nun Chia. The chamber has received a waiver from Nun Chia dated 1st April 9, 2015. He confirms that due to his poor health condition, that he had leg back pain and that he cannot see the for long. And in order to effectively participate in the future hearings, he requests to waive his right to participate in and be present at the 1st April 2015. 15 hearing. He has been informed by his counsel about the consequence of this waiver that in no way it can be construed as a waiver of his rights to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented or admitted to this court at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC, Dated 1st April 2015, who notes that the health condition of Nguyen Chi is that he has chronic back pain when he sits for long and recommends that the chamber shall grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from a holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants Nun Chi his request to follow the proceedings remotely from a holding cell downstairs by an audio-visual means for today's proceedings as he waives his direct presence in the courtroom. The AB unit is instructed to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nguyen Chi can participate in and follow today's proceedings remotely. President and good morning, Mr. Richard Dudman. Are you uh, ready? Bonjour, Dudman. Êtes-vous prêt? I am ready, uh, Mr. Dudman. President. Oui, je suis prêt, Monsieur le Président. 
Thank you, Mr. Datman. Le Président, merci, M. Datman. And the Chamber now hand the floor to the political la lawyers for civil parties to continue putting questions to you. Pour And Madame International Lead Co Lawyer for Civil Parties, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Nous plus de uh, we pour le have uh, no further questions for the witness. Uh, President, President, thank you. And now the Merci. Chamber hands the floor to Kyus and Pons Defense. Uh, de Council, you may proceed. Maître, vous avez la parole. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Bonjour, Monsieur Dudman. Good evening, Mr. Dudman. Je m'appelle Antagissé et je suis co-avocat international de Monsieur Cussampan. Et je vais à mon tour vous poser quelques questions. Ça ne devrait pas être trop long. It shouldn't take too much time. Good morning. Bonjour. Good morning. Good evening. Um, lors de sa déposition uh, devant cette chambre. Uh, votre consoeur Elisabeth Baker Elizabeth Peck a évoqué Becker les préparatifs chamber, en vue de uh, votre voyage en, uh, de décembre 1978 uh, au Cambodge. Uh, et uh, and, uh, voilà ce qu'elle a indiqué. Uh, et là, je vais citer plutôt uh, uh, son ouvrage quote from her book, en anglais, « When the war was over ». Over, et en français, « Les larmes du Cambodge ». Le RN, the ERN. le passage que je vais citer se trouve à l'ERN 00638-654 en français et en anglais 00238-1-1-0-0. C'est la page 402 euh, on page 402, en anglais. Uh, in the, uh, voilà uh, ce qu'elle dit à what propos she, de uh, ses préparatifs. Dudman et moi Dudman and myself, avions été informés uh, de la situation critique du Cambodge avant notre arrivée. J'avais discuté avec des experts uh, du département d'État, du ministère de la Défense from the of et de la CIA as well, as well à Washington. As CIA in Washington. À Bangkok et à Pékin, j'avais rencontré des spécialistes politiques met, uh, et militaires américains, français, from the USA, canadiens, from France, from Canada, australiens et chinois. From Australia and from China. Aucun ne m'avait prédit une guerre à grande échelle entre le Vietnam et le Cambodge. Vietnam Tout au plus, selon eux, them, les Vietnamiens pousseraient jusqu'au Mekong et s'y arrêteraient, satisfaits de contrôler la rive orientale du fleuve there, avant de poursuivre vers la capitale au cours d'une offensive ultérieure. Uh, L'un des plus éminents experts américains, uh, un vieil ami, m'assura à Bangkok que mes craintes au sujet des rumeurs de guerre et de ma propre sécurité étaient sans fondement. Ce sera du gâteau, conclut-il. Fin de citation. Ma première question est de savoir si vous vous souvenez, M. Dudman, si vous avez pris comme Mme Becker des précautions et euh, pris des informations sur la situation au Cambodge avant euh, de préparer votre voyage Before de you 78. prepared uh, your trip in 1978? Uh, I uh, do not remember what preparations I made. Je I'm sure I talked to many people, including officials. And, uh, uh, but I can't personnes, recall what I did exactly. Est-ce que vous vous souvenez uh, si... Uh, comme euh, il a été dit à If Elizabeth Baker, euh, si on vous disait également qu'il n'y avait pas a priori à craindre d'offensive immédiate. Uh, that you shouldn't fear an immediate attack from the Vietnamese. I don't remember any such uh, assurance that I received. Je ne me souviens pas d'avoir reçu ce genre de garantie. À propos de euh, ce conflit latent uh, en cours uh, entre le Cambodge et le Vietnam, est-ce que uh, 
toujours dans le cadre des préparatifs de ce voyage et surtout dans le cadre de votre travail sur la région et notamment sur le Vietnam est-ce que euh, vous avez eu à euh, effectuer des recherches sur euh, les questions frontalières entre le Vietnam et le Cambodge et notamment euh, les discussions relatives à la ligne Brévié Je ne me souviens pas des recherches que j'ai éventuellement faites. Il y a deux jours, ou hier, je ne sais plus, vous avez, évoqué, vous avez eu l'occasion de réécouter euh, les propos euh, tenus par Pol Pot euh, lors de votre entrevue euh, de 78, dans l'extrait qui a été euh, joué à l'audience euh, par mon confrère de euh, Nyon Chea. Ah, je confirme uh, que c'était bien hier. Uh, Pol Pot évoque les volontés expansionnistes du Vietnam et parle uh, également uh, du fait qu'il ne s'agit pas que d'un problème frontalier. Est-ce que vous vous souvenez de cette partie de cet entretien et est-ce que ça correspondait à vos connaissances de l'époque, si vous vous en souvenez, uh, des volontés politiques du Vietnam I don't remember that conversation, so I don't know how to compare it with what I knew at the time. Comment j'aurais pu donc faire la comparaison? Est-ce que vous vous souvenez à l'époque, nous étions en pleine guerre froide C'est aussi un point qui est évoqué euh, par Pol Pot dans ses propos, à savoir euh, un rapprochement entre le Between Vietnam, Vietnam et l'Union soviétique, est-ce que euh, cela rafraîchit votre mémoire par rapport aux événements de l'époque Je ne m'en souviens pas. Dans votre In your rapport, report, effectué en janvier 1979, hein, document E3-3290, uh, et à l'ERN uh, 00419-207, vous évoquez euh, la présence chinoise au Cambodge et voilà ce que vous dites. Je vais vous citer en anglais puisque nous n'avons pas de traduction française. À l'attention des interprètes, c'est euh, juste avant le paragraphe hein, « Where are the rich ?» Nowhere in the travels did we see nulle part pendant notre voyage Any sizable body of Cambodian troops or weapons, and the only signs we saw of Chinese assistance in the country were two MIGs flying over Phnom Penh one day, and a line of 56 Chinese trucks driving north from Kampong Som, where a Chinese freighter had discharged them. Fin de citation. End of quote. Monsieur Dudman, est-ce que euh, cette Mr. partie Dudman, de votre rapport vous rafraîchit la mémoire et est-ce que vous vous souvenez avoir uh, your your bien vu euh, deux MIG volés au-dessus de Phnom Penh MIG fighter planes flying over Phnom Penh. I do not remember that. Je ne m'en souviens pas. Lors de sa déposition, et vous l'avez aussi évoqué brièvement, euh, When vous avez évoqué, euh, pardon, Elizabeth Baker Elizabeth a évoqué Becker la mort de Caldwell et les hypothèses death, qui ont euh, été euh, formulées à l'époque, uh, toujours dans votre rapport E3-3290, voilà ce que vous écrivez. À nouveau, euh, je vais passer... 
à l'anglais. Vous, vous évoquez les, ce qui a été dit par Jun Prasit. Prasit a décrit les tirs as a political act to, discredit, act to discredit us in the world and to show that we cannot protect our friends. He said the terrorists knew that the visit of the first three Westerners to Cambodia was a significant one and that Cambodia's reputation in the world would be greatly damaged if they were assassinated. Only days later, that Cambodian regime would be driven into hiding by a Vietnamese assault. Fin de citation. End of quote. Là encore, même question. Monsieur Goldman, est-ce que question. cette partie de votre rapport vous rafraîchit la mémoire Et est-ce que vous vous souvenez hein, que Chun Prasit a évoqué euh, dès le premier jour l'hypothèse hein, d'une euh, attaque vietnamienne of a Vietnamese attack. I, I didn't understand your question. Je n'ai pas très bien compris votre question. Je vous demande si um, cette partie you, de votre uh, rapport if, uh, you vous remember la mémoire this, uh, et si vous vous And souvenez bien if you que Chun Prasit a évoqué l'hypothèse d'une attaque par le Vietnam, d'une attaque terroriste par le Vietnam, comme une, as maybe euh, une thèse dès le premier jour de euh, cet assassinat. Of the reasons for the murder. I really don't remember my thinking at the time. I, I have only what I wrote at the time was what I what I knew then or thought I knew. But I don't have any recollection of anything further. Dans le même rapport, vous avez In également report, euh, évoqué les propos de Yang Sari, toujours euh, Yang Sari said, au même ERN, donc 0041921212, je cite en anglais. And I will quote in English again. Yang Sari said sadly that the, that the visit had been intended to present to the world the concrete situation in, this, in his country, but that the terrorist incident had cast a very dark cloud on this effort. The Cambodian government later attributed the terrorist act to Vietnam, its enemy in a current war in which there was a temporary lull at the time of our visit. Fin de citation. End of quote. Même question, est-ce so, que euh, cela vous again. rappelle des souvenirs Does Ça this, correspond, uh, j'ai bien compris, à, report, à uh, vos, your, your votre rapport de l'époque et ce que vous aviez this... indiqué juste après no, les faits <coughs> Non, cela ne me rappelle rien. Dernier extrait que je veux uh, vous soumettre sur, uh, au sujet de votre rapport uh, report, de 1978. Vous avez évoqué certaines about, uh, hypothèses, que, enfin, vous avez indiqué à l'audience, uh, uh, répondant aux questions de M. le co-procureur, qu'il y avait plusieurs thèses à l'époque et qu'il y avait de la spéculation. Vous vous en souvenez que uh, beaucoup de, de, de bruit ont circulé à la suite de l'assassinat de Caldwell. Caldwell's murder. Et voilà ce que vous avez indiqué and à la fin de votre rapport At the end of your report, sur l'hypothèse euh, d'une attaque fomentée par euh, le gouvernement Khmer Rouge lui-même. Voilà ce que vous avez indiqué. Finally, enfin, was there any possibility that the government could have arranged the attack? A dispatch from Hanoi later reported that Coldwell had recently turned against Cambodia and conjectured that the government may have wanted to prevent what they feared would be an adverse report. This seems out of the question. The Cambodian government had everything to lose from the incident. If, for some uncountable reason, the authorities had wanted us killed, they could have contrived an accident or ambush to kill us all. 
and from lengthy conversation with Caldwell up to a few hours uh, of his death, I know that he remained fully sympathetic to the Cambodian Revolution. Fin de citation. End of quote. Première question. So my first question. Est-ce que uh, vous vous souvenez uh, de votre conclusion de l'époque et est-ce que vous confirmez uh, première question, est-ce que vous vous souvenez de, de, de cette conclusion est-ce que c'est bien, est bien ce que vous avez semblé en 78 que um, seemed, cet, uh, cet attentat n'avait uh, aucun intérêt pour le, say that there was, le gouvernement cambodgien there was the, the Cambodian government had no interest uh, in uh, fomenting such an attack I have read late, just today, uh, and again, what I wrote at the time, but I have no recollection of what led me to write that. I don't remember this, those circumstances. Bien. Je vous remercie de um, la patience dont vous avez preuve, M. Dudman, et j'ai une question Mr. Dudman, and I have stable, no further Président. questions. Thank you. President Chachi uh, Sadabant, do you have any questions you would like to put to the witness? It seems that the bench uh, does not uh, have any questions. And this morning's uh, proceeding will adjourn uh, now as it ends before the scheduled time. And we will resume the proceedings again at 1 o'clock this afternoon. And for the afternoon session, we will hear the statements of impact by two civil parties who claims they suffered harms under the Democratic Cambodian regime from the 17th April 1975 to the 6th January 1979. This information is for the parties and the general public. The, and Mr. Richard Dutman, the Chamber is grateful of your time and testimony, Dutman, and your testimony will contribute to ascertaining the truth in this case. And the hearing of your testimony is now concluded, and uh, you may be excused, and we wish you all the uh, very best. And the Très Chamber would also like to thank uh, the uh, two councils, that is Mr. Todd Lowell and Mr. Jason Barrett, for your assistance in the testimony of Mr. Richard Dudman. And the testimony is now concluded. So you may also rest. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Madam Deputy, and goodbye, Mr. Richard Dudman. And the Deputy International Co-Prosecutor, uh, do you have the floor? Uh, yes, before we break, um, Mr. President, um, yesterday uh, I mentioned um, my recollection that uh, an issue we discussed yesterday um, that had been raised by the new Shia team uh, questioning or challenging the use of um, victim impact uh, statements uh, relating to the facts of the case. Um, I did look at the transcript and I did find uh, where this issue was uh, discussed and ruled upon. Um, on the 20th of May uh, 2013, uh, this was about one week before the victim impact testimony was to begin, uh, the court uh, scheduled uh, argument at the end of the day to hear from the parties on the issue of uh, to what extent the prosecutors and the defense would be allowed to question the civil parties during the victim impact. Um, you'll find this at uh, pages uh, 100 to 111, uh, end of that, of the uh, 20th of May, E1, uh, slash 193.1. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Rayner, made uh, 10 points to this court uh, that emphasized 
uh, the importance uh, of being able to rely on factual information from these civil parties. Um, he emphasized, uh, quote, that civil parties should be questioned on all issues of relevance, that evidence relating to suffering and the occurrence of the crimes was inextricably linked. He talked about how the civil parties were victims of forced movement, uh, whose evidence would go to the heart of the trial. He noted that the defense should be provided the opportunity to challenge that evidence. He stated, I quote, both the prosecution and defense have been proceeding on the basis that full examination would take place, end of quote. And he noted the duty of the chamber to ascertain the truth, which mandated that these civil parties testifying in the victim impact phase be treated the same as prior civil parties. In response, uh, this is what Mr. Cope, Nunche's counsel, said, and I quote, Mr. President, I don't think I would ever be saying this in a court of law, but I think I agree with all ten submissions from the prosecution. So we fully concur with the submissions of the prosecution. He was then followed by the Q. Sampan defense, Mr. Birkin, who also concurred with our position. Let me quote him. Bringing people here for them to speak only about their harm suffered, without them explaining the reasons and experience that led to this harm, seems unusual to me and incongruous in such a trial. It's difficult to distinguish the origin, the factual aspects of the harm from the harm itself. He concluded, it seems to me that it is normal if the these people come next week, that aspects linked to harm slide to some things that are factual. We will manage as we can, faced with the situation, in order to try to examine them. The next day, on the 21st of May, again at the end of the day, this is a document, the transcript for the 21st of May, 2013, E1-194.1. Uh, on page 119 in English. The trial chamber issued its ruling on this issue, stating, I quote, there has been a mutual consent amongst all the parties, and the chamber decides that the parties may question the civil parties on relevant factual issues subject to the time limitations already announced. So, when we started the victim impact proceedings, Lorsque everyone in this court knew that they would be examined not just on civil, harm, uh, but on the relevant facts. That is why all the parties asked questions voilà on that, and that is why this chamber voilà cited that evidence in its judgment. Um, it's very unfortunate to me uh, that these arguments were put to the court yesterday. Um, it's not an isolated incident in the appeal brief that was filed by the Nunchea team. And on a going forward basis, I might suggest that where the Nunchea team wishes to make motions to this court, um, it file a motion and not simply attach portions of an appeal brief um, which are being litigated before the Supreme Court. Uh, we take issue with many, many characterizations like this, which misstate what, what has happened before this court. Uh, in any event, it's important that the record be clear um, that in the past trial, uh, this court announced very clearly that these uh, civil parties would be examined on factual issues, and the same should happen uh, today when we start. Thank you. President, uh, Judge Fentz, you have the floor. 
Perhaps it's easier if I add something and then you can answer to both. In this context, uh, I would like to refer to a decision the Nunchia team has referred to in the repeals brief, and that's E267-3 from 2nd of May 2013. So my guess is that there seems to uh, have no translation. Can you check the AV unit? Service audiovisual. President uh, Just Fans, uh, could you please repeat uh, what you had just said? Yeah, I just wanted to add that there was a decision E2673 from 2nd May 2013 dealing with the issue at hand, and I guess it was probably the basis for the debate in court a couple of days later. It was also referenced by the Nunchia defense in the, in the appeal, um, and specifically Page 9 of this decision appears to deal with all the um, issues raised yesterday by the Nunchia defense. It clearly says that cross examination will be allowed. And it also clearly, in paragraph 21, says how generally, generally, how the trial chamber will deal with civil party statements, including impact statements, on trial level. The reason I didn't mention it yesterday is because, since it was mentioned in the appeal, I thought it was obvious, and the only thing I tried to do is highlight what I thought was probably a misquote of another decision. But just to add to the to the arguments. Thank you. Um, thank you, Judge Fenz. Um, and in reaction to what the deputy co-prosecutor just said, um, of course, yesterday I revisited our appeal brief, and I uh, also revisited the decision of the trial chamber in this respect. Um, and um, it seems to me we have a completely different interpretation as to the ruling on this matter uh, by the trial chamber. Um, to us, to me, it seems clear there's a distinction between testimony given uh, by witnesses or civil parties normally um, while sitting there uh, and giving uh, testimony to the facts and the phenomenon of civil impact um, testimony. Now, obviously, if um, a civil party talks about the suffering, uh, he or she would relate to uh, some underlying facts. Um, however, the whole idea of the distinction also made by this trial chamber is that it is, in, in essence, no evidence. Uh, evidence that will not be used uh, against the accused uh, ultimately in its judgment. That's how uh, we understood it then, and that's how we still understand your decision. Um, you've seen in our appeal brief that we've quoted uh, your decision, um, and uh, the mere fact that it is only um, 10 minutes' time that was allotted to us to ask some questions to the civil party uh, giving civil impact testimony is one element that confirms um, our interpretation and understanding. Uh, the fact, as mentioned yesterday, uh, that you asked um, the defense's permission to continue while Nguyen Chia was absent uh, because of sickness confirms uh, this interpretation. Um, we have been always acting on the basis of um, a, a fundamental difference in suffering uh, um, testimony on the one hand and real testimony to the evidence on the other hand. Um, 
at the time, and that is in, res in re response to uh, Deputy Co-Prosecutor uh, Eliza. Co at the time, de of course, we were fully agreeing with uh, uh, Prosecutor Keith Rayner when we said that we needed uh, equal Keith opportunity to, to, uh, to question witnesses. However, that was not the standard practice. The standard practice was you have another 10 minutes to ask some follow-up questions. Um, uh, plus, um, I think we should be reminded of uh, a difference between, on the one hand, the civil party coming here to testify, and then at the end uh, giving civil impact testimony, and this whole group uh, which is now scheduled, which is just coming here for half hour or for an hour. Um, in any case, I believe, and that's the reason of our appeal, there is a uh, very different interpretation possible as to what the law is. Um, we on the defense team are lawyers. We, we read your decision and uh, uh, if we see things uh, wrongly, then, then uh, the Supreme Court chamber will tell us. And if you see uh, we see things wrongly, then of course we will we would, we would uh, accept that in this, at this stage in these proceedings. But to us there is unclarity uh, uh, as to what the law is. And if if you're saying this is how we should interpret your decision, then uh, we will arrive at our alternative. Our proposed alternative is that we need uh, the equal time uh, to uh, question the, the upcoming civil parties. So that's, I think, uh, how it should be interpreted. Um, and that's how uh, uh, we should see, uh, you should see our appeal brief. And uh, last remark, following some remarks of the the co prosecutor. The reason why um, we just send you excerpts from the appeal brief is because of um, um, reasons of expe expediency and of, of, of fastness. That's, that's the reason that we did it. We simply do not have the resources to um, always come up with full uh, responses uh, to motions, especially in light of the fact that um, the civil party um, testimony, impact, impact testimony was already scheduled. So, again, summarizing, um, uh, what apparently seems clear to other parties didn't seem clear to us. Apparently, what was clear to all the other parties was not clear to us. President, you may now proceed uh, the counsel for Mr. Kiosampon. Defense de Kiosampon. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Très brièvement, une citation like d'une de vos décisions, enfin d'un mémo, like to un document E236-5-3, pour que vous compreniez la, mon intervention d'hier et la distinction que nous avions cru comprendre clair entre les deux types de dépositions, à savoir une déposition de partie civile qui vient pour témoigner des faits et une partie civile qui vient pour déposer sur ses souffrances. Dans ce mémo qui a trait à la possibilité d'une liaison vidéo avec la partie civile TCCP 13, vous avez indiqué ceci, je cite, le but, le but des audiences consacrées à l'incidence des crimes allégués sur les victimes est de donner aux parties civiles l'occasion de présenter des éléments de preuve à l'appui de leurs demandes de réparation morale et collective, règle 23.1b du règlement intérieur. Fin de citation. Dans mon entendement, lorsque l'on parle de demandes de réparation, nous sommes dans un deuxième temps, à savoir qu'on a déjà décidé qu'il y avait une condamnation et qu'ensuite on s'intéresse dans un deuxième temps à la demande de réparation. Et pour nous, et c'est pour ça que lors du premier procès, nous avons peu interrogé les parties civiles qui venaient témoigner sur leurs souffrances et que nous avions compris qu'il y avait une distinction entre les audiences pour lesquelles elles apparaissaient en tant que témoin des faits en même temps, et celle où c'était uniquement concentré sur la demande de réparation morale et collective. Dans ce mémo, c'est, nous semble-t-il, ce que vous indiquiez. Donc, qu'il soit bien clair que pour nous, 
Il ne s'agit pas de dire qu'effectivement, on peut complètement différencier les faits et les souffrances, puisqu'il faut un minimum que la partie civile évoque les faits, mais des faits qui lui sont propres et des faits qui doivent être examinés par la Chambre en vue de la demande de réparation qui intervient dans un deuxième temps, puisque nous sommes d'accord, il ne peut y avoir de demande de réparation que s'il y a une culpabilité qui est prononcée. Dans ces conditions, c'est euh, euh, le sens de la clarification aujourd'hui, puisque nous aussi, nous avons noté au paragraphe 30, il me semble, de notre mémoire d'appel, hein, qu'il y avait eu une utilisation massive des euh, déclarations des parties civiles qui étaient censées avoir très simplement à la demande de réparation morale et collective et qui ont été utilisées comme des éléments de preuve à charge. Voilà la clarification que nous demandons aujourd'hui, étant précisé, encore une fois, que nous avons toujours essayé de faire preuve de... Euh, euh, clairvoyance euh, dans euh, les questions que nous posons et que nous avons l'intention de continuer à faire ceci. Maintenant, si il y a des éléments nouveaux, et encore une fois, je précise que éléments nouveaux pour nous, ce n'est pas toujours simple lorsque nous n'avons que des, des éléments ténus euh, relatifs aux parties civiles avant qu'elles viennent de déposer. Donc, ce n'est que à la vue de l'audition de la déposition de ces parties civiles que nous saurons si nous devons avoir besoin de plus de temps pour les contre-interroger. President, you may not proceed. Deputy International Court Prosecutor. I will be very brief. Um, what we just heard is, is revisionist history. Uh, read the transcript from the 20th of May 2013. There is no ambiguity. Uh, there is no room at all for Mr. Cope and the defense to suggest that they were unaware of the purpose of the victim impact civil parties. It could not be clearer. The exact issue we were discussing was the extent to which the civil parties heard in victim impact would be testified about factual information and whether that could be used. That was the issue. Read the 10 points from Mr. Rayner. Read the responses from the Defense Council. This is crystal clear. This is an issue that they have made up after the judgment, after losing. It is as simple as that. President. So we, the chamber does not allow any further submission or observation because uh, we have uh, been in two rounds already. La chambre n'entendra plus personne s'exprimer sur cette question puisque le chamber informe les parties already yesterday that uh, the chamber <coughs> is well informed and we will um, take this matter into consideration. Bien informé. Security personnel are instructed to bring Mr. Kirsten Pond back to the waiting room downstairs and bring him back to the courtroom this afternoon at 1 o'clock. The court is now adjourned.